Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at another portable SSD from SanDisk. This is their transport for their ProBlade storage devices. And this looks like your run-of-the-mill external USB-C device, but the storage part can pull out here. And they have these rugged storage modules called ProBlades, and they come in a bunch of different capacities. And what they consist of is an NVMe SSD with a customized connector here on the front that allows for more rugged transport of high performance storage. And then of course you can swap these things out at will. They are hot swappable, so you can copy some data onto one, pass it off to a colleague, and then slide in another one and keep going. They also have an external enclosure coming out soon that will work with these Pro Blades that operates on Thunderbolt 3 at up to 40 gigabits per second. This device is USB Type-C, and we'll get into some of the complexities of USB Type-C in just a second. But I do want to let you know, in the interest of full disclosure, that this came in free of charge from SanDisk. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this storage system is all about. Now, the price point on this is $69 for the enclosure, but that does not include any storage. They do sell versions with storage pre-installed that, of course, you can swap out with other blades that you purchase separately. The blades here are pricey. The one terabyte is 180 right now, the two terabyte 290, and the four terabyte about $600. There is a price premium to this because this is being marketed as a professional grade product. You can build your own SSD for less. You can certainly buy standalone uh, external SSDs for less money. But I think what they're going for here is professionals who want something reliable and rugged from a trusted brand with a warranty that covers the entire product. So if you were, of course, to buy your own enclosure and your own SSD, you've got two different companies to deal with there. There's certainly uh, variations in quality on the enclosures that you might purchase. Here, it's something that they're marketing to professionals to say, hey, look, you know, you pay a little bit more with us, but you know what you're getting. And these blades feel very rugged. They're designed to survive about 4,000 pounds of crushing force. So if you are a professional tossing these around to colleagues, they should be able to survive a good amount of abuse out in the field. The only part that remains exposed here without any protection is the connector here on the front. And I would love to see them develop some kind of cap or something that you can snap onto the front just to keep that connector a little more secure. I was surprised that they did not include some kind of cap in the box. But these uh, blades are very easy to get into. There are three screws here at the bottom and you can pull the case right off of it. So if you should damage the connector here, getting into the uh, actual NVMe underneath is not that difficult. As you can see in some of this B-roll footage here, there is a quite a good amount of thermal paste all over the place, but uh, inside is an off-the-shelf WD Black SN750 NVMe drive. And if you were to damage the connector, you could very easily just take that drive out put it into another blade or just put it into a PC or something. So you have some redundancy here of the physical hardware, and that's not something you would typically get with an external SSD that just has a connector on it. So if you snapped off that connector, you'd have a whole host of trouble getting the data off of it. Here you've got a couple of shots at uh, getting access to the NVMe underneath, and these are not very difficult to disassemble and put back together. They slide in quite nicely to the transport here. I don't yet have the base station, but I would imagine that process is pretty uh, seamless as well. So I like the feel of this, and I can envision camera manufacturers at some point putting this connector inside of their cameras, and you can use these little blades for uh, virtual videotapes or something like that. So that could be something we might see in the future with this. Now, my only disappointment with the transport enclosure here is that it's not a Thunderbolt enclosure. The drives are formatted for the Mac. Most Macs have a Thunderbolt 3 or 4 port on board, yet they chose to go with the 20 gigabit USB 2x2 standard instead on this. And my issue with the USB 2x2 standard is that most computers don't support 2x2. So in most cases, the computer you plug this into will only go up to 10 gigabits max on the USB port, not the 20 that this one supports. If you have a computer with USB 4, 
the USB 420 gigabit standard, which is based on Thunderbolt, is not the same as the 2x2 standard that this drive supports. So I think for most people, the most you're going to get is about 10 gigabits of USB performance out of this, not the advertised 20. And this is something we've talked about a number of times with a bunch of other drives that uh, SanDisk and WD have put out over the last year. But that said, the USB controller on the transport performs quite nicely. We'll begin here with a Blackmagic disk speed test. And this is a great test for measuring how well it will deal with raw video recording. And as you can see here, we're writing at about 974.8 megabytes per second, and we're getting read speeds at roughly that rate as well. So it's performing here where I would expect a pro-level device to perform. I'm not seeing any drop-off of the right performance as we're cycling through the test here. So it is performing as I would expect it to perform, but we're not going to get that 20 gigabit speed because the computer that I have doesn't support that 2x2 two two standard, even though it has a Thunderbolt port on board. So your mileage will vary. I suspect that if you did have a 2x2 two two port, you would see uh, speeds probably double what you're getting here. But again, for most people, this is what you can expect out of it. We also ran the Crystal Disk Mark test on this a little bit earlier, and I was quite pleased with its performance in random reads and writes as well, which of course is going to be more important if you are loading up operating systems or playing games or doing something other than just writing large files back and forth to the drive. And comparatively, it did very well against other higher end NVMe SSD drive. So you can see against the Samsung X5 above, which is a Thunderbolt based device, it doesn't perform as well, but I suspect these blades will perform better when they're using that desktop Thunderbolt dock. And I think you'll probably get speeds close to or exceeding what that Samsung did there. But against other SanDisk products like the Extreme Pro, this one does a little better, especially when it comes to the random reads and writes. And you can see also it's a bit a higher performing versus the Samsung T7, which is Samsung's current uh, device out there for USB Type-C connections. Now, if you're looking to pair this up with an Xbox Series S or X or a PlayStation 5, know that like other USB external storage, these drives will play the older PS4 and Xbox One games, but not the new next generation titles. Those do need faster NVMe storage, and although these drives could deliver that performance, the interface for these is not compatible in a way that those consoles can take advantage of that speed. So just know that this won't get you anywhere further with next generation titles, even though there is a capability here to go faster. I would love the transport here to support Thunderbolt because that would really unlock the performance that you've got on these devices. Now, the docking station that's coming out soon that does support Thunderbolt isn't all that large. It'll take four of these at once, so that opens up a lot of possibilities for RAID and other means of very fast data transfer. And the good news is, at least, if you do invest in some of these blades, you'll get that performance just by changing out the mechanism by which you're attaching them to your PC. So there's some upgradability perhaps in performance here as you move from uh, the USB interface here to Thunderbolt. But I think these would have been really killer had the transport here supported Thunderbolt and not this USB 2x2 two two standard. So hopefully I'll get in that uh, docking station in the near future and see how these things uh, work without any impediments of its interface. And when I get that in, we'll definitely do a follow-up here. But I do like the product. I think this does have a spot, especially with professionals that want that peace of mind. And we'll keep an eye on this as things develop with the ProBlade system. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month.
Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.